you take the word of God, please, and turn with me to the New Testament book of 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter. We'll begin reading in just a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 5. Have your Bible open there as the Apostle Paul takes pen in hand and writes under the inspiration of the Spirit of God these words to us. The Bible says, Now I will come unto you, and I shall pass through Macedonia. For I do pass through Macedonia. And it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye might bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you if the Lord see it. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me. There are many adversaries. You're going to have to marking things in your Bible. I want you to mark that nice verse. A great door, many adversaries. If there's ever going to be a great door opened in your life, it's going to be a door that has many adversaries. You may get the idea that I have the greatest opportunity in the world. That opportunity is going to bring with it many adversaries. It's the devil's work to do all he can to make your life difficult. It's Satan's work to do all he can to make it hard for you to do what God's given you to do. You're treading through perilous times. No doubt about it. When Paul wrote, to Timothy, he said, these last days bring perilous times. And he gave us the characteristics of those perilous times. He lists them for us. If you take the time to hold your place here in the Bible and turn with me to 2 Timothy, I want you to hear what Paul wrote. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, this know also that in the last days Perilous times shall come. I wonder what you imagine that to be. What do you imagine that to be? And he begins a list. And this long list begins, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. God says these are the things that characterize the last days. I happen to believe that we are living in those last days. It doesn't mean that you're to be downhearted. It doesn't mean that you're to give up. God is always giving us grace and power. The Spirit of God dwelling in us is greater than the enemies we face outside anywhere. Greater is he that's in you, the Bible says, than he that's in the world. But I just want to make you aware that you're living in perilous times. No doubt about it. So, Paul writing to the church there in Corinth, he says, a great door and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. A great door. And I want you to remember that you have a great door open unto you. No generation of people ever lived and had an opportunity to prepare that had any greater door open to them than you. On any area you take a look, any place you look, the need is great and the door is open. There are more lost people 
without Christ who need the gospel than any other time in your life right now. More powerful things can be done in a local New Testament church right now than ever before. When the Lord Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I the son of man am? And you ought to familiarize yourself with that conversation in Matthew chapter 16. When they began to answer, he said, but whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered for the group and said, thou art the Christ. And I hope you stick with that message always. Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So salvation is a revelation as it is a decision that people ask God to forgive their sin and by faith trust the Lord as their Savior. But God reveals himself when you express that faith. That's his intent. He came to say, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And he followed it up by saying, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So no obstacle, no obstacle is too great. No vision too small. Except if it doesn't have a vision seeing Christ first leading you. If I were sitting in your seat, I'd be dreaming all kinds of wonderful dreams about I'm going to tackle what God's given me to do and I'm going to have God's power to get it done. So Paul is writing to this church in Corinth every kind of problem imaginable, but he's telling them there's a great door open for you. Some of you have told me about what part of the world you're venturing into. Some of those places are perilous, but God is greater than your peril. Some of those places may be treacherous. God is greater than the enemies you face. God is always greater. And you ought to be able to go with the word of God in your hand, hidden in your heart, filled with the spirit of God and accomplish what God has given you to do. No doubt about it. Now he gets specific in this Chapter 16, 1 Corinthians. He says, a great door and effectual is open. It is not only great, it's effectual. You be faithful and God will do his part. When you do your part, you can count on the fact God's gonna do his part. I've seen the Lord come through so many times. When I said years and years ago, God put in my heart, Years ago, 1978, God put in my heart to start a college. <laughs> when I had the faith to tell some people about it, it became the ridicule of all ridicules. I was acclaimed a very foolish person. Don't you know that that's near to an impossibility? But the need is great. It's what God wants. We must train people to serve the Lord. And when we launched out, God met us. And when you launch out by faith to do the will of God, God will meet you. I can't imagine all the ways that God will work to meet you, but he will make himself known to you around every corner in every trial that he's with you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to trust him, to believe him. Have a bold faith, an adventurous faith. Because if it can't be done by faith, it can't be done in a way that pleases God because without faith, it's impossible to please him. It's gonna require faith. And the Bible says the door is open and it's effectual. Never forget that, effectual. 
You knock on the door and God will be there to answer it. He'll prove himself again and again. You'll find him in places where perhaps you didn't expect him, but he's proving that he's going to meet you. And the Bible says not only is the door open and it's effectual, and conjunction, there are many adversaries. Everything done for God requires faith. Everything done for God will not only require faith, it'll require courage because the devil hates it. The world and the flesh and the devil are always against you. But God is for you. And you repeat again and again to yourself, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. Get that settled. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. So I'm going through the open door. I'm believing God that it's effectual. And I know without a doubt I'm going to face the adversaries. I love this ending part of the 16th chapter of 1 Corinthians because Paul says some certain things about people that God is using in his life and is going to use. He talks about the behavior of the people and the way they should behave. But I want you to turn with me for just a moment to the gospel according to John and some things I want to read to you in the gospel according to John. When the Lord was training his disciples, the Bible says he spoke to them in John chapter 10. And remember, when you're dealing with the gospel record given to us in the gospel according to John, that there's a series of things that the Lord dealt with and they're all connected. In the 10th chapter of John, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door that into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And you're going to do everything you can to find some other way than God's way to get something done. But remember, God has a way. Follow God's way. Amen. He that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. God is looking for shepherds who will follow him. That's what he has for you. And he'll bless you for following him, no doubt about it. Let me share something with you from the Old Testament about sheep and shepherds for a moment in the 34th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. I just want you to hear what God is saying because he called his disciples to follow him and he called them to be shepherds. Paul was a shepherd and he wrote the, the people in Corinth and said, there's a great door open. It's effectual and there are many adversaries. The word of God says in Ezekiel chapter 34, and the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. God is calling out the shepherds speaking to them. Prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? So you have a responsibility to feed the flock and to care for them. You eat the fat, and you clothe you with the wood. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. Verse four, the diseased 
have you not strengthened? Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field. When they were scattered, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Please, verse eight. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O oh, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them. God says, here's my problem. It's with the shepherds. That's what the problem is. He said, you're going out as sheep among wolves. There are many adversaries. Some are within the so-called flock. Many adversaries. But the door will stay open and you have to keep moving forward by faith to trust God, to believe God. And I'm saying to these young people who finished their work and now they're graduating, it's not an easy thing God has chosen you to do. It requires faith. And it's full of adversaries. Some will be close to you and become known as your adversaries instead of your friends. But remember that the door is wide open Keep pressing on. Keep working at it. Amen. It is effectual. Obey God. Do what God wants and he'll bless you for it. Amen. No doubt about it. I thought when I came here to this church, I was coming to give the rest of my life and I fully intend that. I fully intend that's what I will do but it's no easy task God's called us to do. The task is simply to follow Jesus Christ, to go through the open door, trust him to do the effectual work and to ask God for the strength to deal with the adversaries. You don't need to come crying to somebody and say all the problems you have. Anybody that serves God is going to have problems. Anybody. God is greater than everyone you'll ever have. He'll be greater than the one you're dealing with right now. There's some victories you're, win, you're winning and those victories will teach you that God will help you win others. Just keep trusting the Lord. Some people ask me from time to time, Pastor, do you ever get tempted to quit? 
And the answer is yes. But when I think of Jesus and what he did, how he came from heaven's glory to this earth, I can't quit him. When I think about my darling wife who stood by my side and helps me every way imaginable, I can't quit. When I think about the promises I've made to my children and grandchildren, I can't quit. I'm fenced in by the Lord's love and those who love the Lord and love me. You'll discover sometime very soon that some people, including Jesus Christ, are counting on you. You can't ever quit. Just keep going through the open door. Trust God to do the effectual work and just deal with the adversaries as they come. God will give you strength for the victory that you need. Let's pray together, may we?